szervusztok! Mi vagyunk Ördög Nora és Szidmai Gergely, és igen. azért jöttünk ide el hozzátok, hogy na beszélgessünk egy kicsit az adatközpontú világról. Tényleg azt gondolom, hogy az év egyik leg, legjobban bárt hazai online eseményén egy kerekasztal show, talk show beszélgetésen köszönhetünk mindenkit. Ma találkoztunk először, igaz? Kétségtelen. Jó, rendben. Tudja bárki a pinkódot egyet? Nem, ez a nap első fontos tanulsága, és azt hiszem meg is, hogy nem muszáj elmondani embereknek a pinkódot. De... Nincs összefüggése az életkorodnak a, a kóddal, igaz? E, mi, nincs, igen. Mi bement? Tényleg bement? Ez bement. De hogy? Tényleg? Igen. Wow! Kalos Bogi érkezik hozzánk, szevasz Bogi. Egy ilyen kísérletnek vetetted alá a laptopodat, és, és telepődtél meg a legjobban ennek a kísérletnek az eredményét. Az etikus hacker átjött hozzám, és azt mondta, hogy akkor ő megpróbálkozna ezzel az egésszel, hogy, hogy be fog lépni a, a laptopomba, és azt gondoltam, hogy hm, hát ez nem, nem hiszem, hogy össze fog jönni. Három perc volt. Tényleg? Mit lophattak volna el a laptopodról? Miket tárolsz benne? Hát gyakorlatilag az egész életemet. Túl meggondolatlanok vagyunk ahhoz, hogy a pszichológiai vonzatait uh, szembenézzünk ezeknek a problémáknak. Így van. Úgy, itt van velünk Bagi Renáta, szakpszichológus. Mi, mi, mi az, ami megváltozott a modern időben, ami a pszichológiai hozzáállást illeti? Például ez a generáció már beleszületett ebbe a világba. Tehát nekünk még van emlékünk arról, uh -huh. hogy milyen volt az a világ, amikor még el lehetett felejteni dolgokat, vagy amikor olyan dolgokat csináltunk esetleg egy osztálykiránduláson, vagy egy az egyetemen, vagy bármit, ami reméljük, hogy már senki nem emlékszik rá, és lehet, hogy tényleg nem. Ma viszont mindig van ott valaki, aki ezt éppen felveszi, vagy megörökíti, vagy, és, és sokan emlékeznek rá, és hogy azért az, azt gondolom, hogy az, az a mi generációnknak is a felelőssége, hogy a fiatalabbakat arról tájékoztassuk, hogy ezek hova kerülnek, mi történik velük, és hát ugye erről fogtok a későbbiekben is beszélni. Bizony. Viszont angolra váltunk, mert fantasztikus nemzetközi szakértők érkeznek hozzánk, és hát azt hiszem most kezdünk igazán a mélyére ásni a témára. And let's so. welcome our guests now. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for joining us. We have uh, we have Bertalan Meskel, hello, a medical futurist. The medical futurist. Thank you for having me. Let of course. Me emphasis have, this. Yes, we have Peter Balog, startup and investor. Hello. Uh, we have Jamie Woodruff, ethical hello. hacker and uh, data security expert. Hello. We have Andy Weir, hello. world renowned novelist and a former computer programmer, if I understand that correctly. And of course we have Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, American astrophysicist and science communicator. Gentlemen, Hello. It's, a, it's an honor, it's an absolute honor to have you guys here. Hello. Thank you. As the medical futurist, my job is to analyze all the technological trends and try to, to find out which visions in the future of medicine and healthcare we should be working towards. Okay. That's how we help governments, um, policymakers, patient groups, wow. medical associations. So really high but level. as a consumer myself, I'm indeed a data addict. I, the sole reason for that is that I want to have a chance, just a chance, for a longer and healthier life. It's mm -hmm. about the data we already have, but simply have never had the interfaces to access that bunch of data. So let's, let's access it, let's own the data, and bring that data to the next doctor-patient meeting and raise these questions. In, in my field, there are objects we've never seen before. There's, there are things that defy any prior understanding of how to even ask questions about it. Yes. And so then you have to say, what kind of data should I be seeking out in this new phenomenon? And that's the, for me, that's the more interesting kind of data because that enables future understanding that would not previously been empowered by data that you're just gathering because people are handing it to you oh. for free or, or, or handing it to you because of what they're doing or what they're otherwise thinking. From my perspective, you know, data is always far more valuable than currency, right? And I've always kind of preached this uh, throughout the years. You know, I started hacking when I was nine years old. And my kind of take on it was, was more like the banks of the cyber world, right? So we'd spray our digital graffiti or tag, you know, you could hike 180,000 websites in one night, relatively simplistic to do. And then moving kind of forward to where we, you know, we've, we've kind of evolved to today. Now hackers and malicious individuals will just sit there for a long period of time 
right? They won't modify anything, they won't change any data, they won't do anything uh, at all to kind of raise um, any questions to, to what might be occurring and they'll just sit there and they'll just watch this data. And you're quite right, it definitely is far more valuable. We're not far from companies um, using things like, oh, we've done, uh, you know, we've had our algorithm do an analysis of all of your public internet behavior. Uh, everything you've posted to Facebook, everything you've posted to Twitter under your own name, everything you've, this is all public information, you weren't trying to hide it. And it has done a personality profile on you based on what you've posted. And we just don't think you'd be a good fit for the company. As an angel investor, it's all about, all about a person. Um, it's all about it the person. It cannot be too much about data. I'm not that data driven. So it's a lot more about the founder, the founder's personality, or the founding team's you personality. You have to go through the data, the, the numbers, the If, if they are good, the if the founders are good, they will figure out. They, will, they might have a bad idea today, but they might figure out that it was a bad idea and then change the idea. So it's all about the people and the, in, the person in, itself? In startups, I believe that it's mostly about people. In Germany today, this year, a newborn died because the, the hospital was going through a cyber attack and they had to shut down every electronic system. Oh. Uh, just this year in the US, the, the medical records of 40 million people were compromised. We're not talking about blood pressure measurements. Nobody's interested in that, especially ours. But we're talking about insurance claims, data that would affect the lives of those people very much. So the, the dark side of this story gets even worse when we go into the details. But I do, I'm an optimistic person. I Please do believe that make it, better. it makes sense it's to it's get to the right side. When you're talking about the, uh, like the medical records and stuff like that, I imagine these, I, yeah, it, it, at some point, if, if, if people are sharing medical data around and you know, maybe you don't get a job because they go like, oh, you know, we think you might have like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. There, there are certainly downsides to it, but wouldn't it be awesome if someday like you just got an automated email that said like, oh, the things that you recently went into the doctor for, this algorithm says you might have a very, very early stage of cancer. So go get checked for this thing right now. And it, and it can be taken care of before it becomes a, a, an issue. Like things that no doctor would be able to figure out, but and an algorithm might. How, how long until the robot goes into a room with an iPad and says, sorry, your son's just died, like bye. You know, and that's the, the kind of edging that we're towards. It won't be long before your washing machine is literally laundering money with ransomware, right? <laughs> and again, that's the way that we're kind of going from a society. But yeah. when AI becomes the AI that everyone imagines, it will be a better version in every way of what we are as humans. It will be more compassionate. It would be more, um, more warm than even the warmest of humans can be. Otherwise, then it's not AI. Okay, it's some, right. it's something else. But if AI becomes what so, we want it to just, be, it's, I don't see any of these as being a problem. We're going to transition now from humans driving cars to self-driving cars. And right now in the United States, I don't know the numbers for the world, but we lose 30,000 people a year to car accidents on our roads and, and freeways. And that's human, humans killing humans with their cars. So we go to self-driving cars, most of the reasons why people die from car accidents will go away because car accidents will drop precipitously. And so let's say that, let's say the death rate drops from 30,000 down to let's say 5,000. But I think one of the biggest challenges in the self-driving car industry as well is that can we trust an algorithm that we cannot understand? And this is one of the biggest questions regarding machine learning and deep neural networks is if it's a black box, if I don't know how it works, can I trust people's lives on it? I think privacy and data is a genie that got, got out of the bottle and we're not putting it back. So. If I'm a practical person here, rather than optimistic, I will say, if we can't put the genie back in the bottle, then let's, let's fully exploit the fact that we can't put it in the bottle yeah. and do things with it that, that 
were previously undreamt of, such as some of the topics that came across in this conversation. Uh, well, see you next year, and thanks yeah, for everybody to sharing these meaningful thoughts with us. Yeah. Um, check um, uh, the website. Yes, yes. mbmfuturetalks.hu mbm or uh, dot .com, I guess. We have yes. both, probably. Yeah. And yeah, join us next year as well.